Hey, welcome back. We're on fire, so we may as well keep on rolling. Um, in this video on how to use the cute game engine, I'm going to be teaching you how to create an enemy for your player. This particular enemy will actually body thrust, uh, so you can think body slam your player when your player gets within its field of view. We're actually going to cover quite a bit in this tutorial. You're going to learn a lot, but it's still pretty short. So let's fire up the IDE and dive straight into the code. See you there. Hello again. Okay, so in this tutorial, of course, we're going to try to create an enemy that will body slam or body thrust um, your entity whenever uh, your entity gets within its field of view. So let's go ahead and create this enemy entity first of all, and then we'll give it the proper behaviors via entity controller. So that's the plan. Create the entity and its graphical representation, and then add the necessary behaviors to achieve this body slam behavior. Okay, so um, creating this uh, spider entity, we're planning on creating a spider that will body slam your uh, entity. A spider body slamming a minotaur, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but whatever. Okay, so uh, creating this uh, spider entity is really no different than creating our minotaur entity. It's just a different picture. It's a different set of frames. So since that's so redundant and we did that in a previous tutorial, I've actually already done this for you and put it in a little uh, function um, similar to the uh, get minotaur function. I created a get spider entity function and we're simply going to uh, use that. So uh, create spider entity, oh it's QGE entity, we're going to call it spider entity. I have a habit of hitting Q instead of W. Um, okay, so we created. Nope, we're actually we don't want to create new. We want to do get spider entity. So uh, QGE get spider entity. So I created this function. You can always right click and go to the definition. This is included with the cute game engine that you downloaded. Uh, it's for you know uh, uh, testing purposes or playing around with the examples. So let's quickly go over the code since we're not going to actually do it. So just like before, it creates an entity, it creates a sprite sheet, and this time it uses this spider sprite sheet, as you can see, um, and then it extracts those sprites from the sprite sheet, puts it into the entity sprite, and then attaches the entity sprite to the entity and returns that entity. There's, <laughs> that sounds like a, a tongue twister, but really there's nothing fancy going on. We've already done this in a previous tutorial. Um, and, and you are supposed to watch these tutorials in sequence, so I'm not going to redo this. And I don't think you want to see me redo it. Okay, maybe some of you do, but I won't redo it. Um, okay, so we created the spider entity. Now let's go ahead and add him to the map uh, and all of that other good stuff. So uh, we will... Um, we will first of all let's set the origin because these sprites are 128 by 128 I want the middle of him to be the uh, the position that he rotates about so I'm gonna set the origin to be well for the spider I think 64 64 is good this is really not that important it's just to make things look better you can actually ignore it if you wanted to okay but this is the important part uh, we want to set the position so we want to give him a position, not set parent entity. Oh, come on. I'm tired, it's late, sorry. Okay, set position to, we're going to put him at around 600, 600. All right, I'm going to try to speed up. And then I'm going to actually uh, add him. So map, add entity, and we're going to add the spider entity. Okay, so we created him, we added him to the map. And now let's go ahead and see if he's even there. I like to check these once in a while. Fingers crossed. I hope it doesn't crash. I, I always fear crashes. Okay, so there we go. We see the little spider. Look at his uh, idle or stand animation playing. Kind of cool. Look at uh, our, our player's stand animation. Okay, so now let's have him body slam him whenever the uh, Minotaur gets within its field of view, okay? So again, you, you guessed it right. We use entity controllers to add those uh, sort of behaviors. So there is uh, an entity controller called EC body thruster. 
which basically does exactly what we want it to do. So let's go ahead and include its header first of all. So, and then we will so have spider body thrust enemies. Okay. So I'll talk about how this uh, this works. Okay. So first of all, this body thruster controller will only have the controlled entity body thrust enemies. So there's the concept of enemies. Um, so we got to make the entity and the spider entity. So the minotaur entity and the spider entity enemies. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we will take our entity, aka the minotaur, we're going to make him group zero. We're going to take the spider entity and we're going to make him group one. Now they're not enemies just because they're in different groups, but this is what will make them enemies. So once we call add enemy group, right? So we're saying spider, add an enemy group. We want group zero to be your enemy. So in, in short, we've, we have uh, told the spider entity that group zero is your enemy and entity, the minotaur entity is in group, z group zero. Hopefully that made sense, it made sense to me. Okay, so uh, now that they're enemies, we're gonna basically create the entity controller. So EC body thruster, we're just gonna call it body thrust C. C stands for controller in this context. Uh, EC body thruster, we're gonna... Okay, so the body thruster entity controller will control the spider entity and it will give it a behavior such that whenever enemy entities, such as the minotaur, come within the spider's field of view, the spider will body thrust it. All of that behavior is encapsulated in this one little body thruster class. You get all of that just by attaching this uh, class to your entity. It's kind of nice. It's actually very nice. That's that's my favorite thing about this game engine. When I was designing it, um, I'm sorry, a little sidetrack. When I was designing the API for the game engine, I kind of thought about what would be like my dream API? What would I want to use? And then I worked, you know, as hard as I could to basically make it actually work that way. I wasn't able to get everything I wanted, but for the most part, it's very nice. Anyways, back to the tutorial. So we've created that that uh, entity controller. Now let's go ahead and see if it works. I think that's all we need to do. There is one little thing we can do. Uh, actually, let me uh, let me let me cancel this. Okay. So there's a little debug function that will let us see the field of view of the entity. So we'll do body. So the body thrust controller actually has a set show field of view. It will actually show the field uh, show the field of view of the controlled entity. So we're going to set that to true. And now let's see. Come on. Okay. So here we go. See the field of view of the spider? Um, see, as soon as we got into the field of view, and he's starting to chase me. And there we go. He's attacking me. The angle is off a little bit. You know, oh, he already killed me. Uh, let's go ahead and run that again. I'm going to increase my health. So I'm going to do entity.set health to 100. I'm going to give myself a little more health so we can survive a few more body thrusts. There's a little body thrust sound too. I'll be quiet for a second so you can hear it. Um, ignore my computer's fan. It's going crazy because I'm recording. See that? Um, and a little teaser, in a future tutorial, I'm actually going to be showing you how to take revenge on this little spider and attack him. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in, in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.